welcome. Oh dear, we've just lost Joanne. Joanne was here and now she's popped out, but hopefully she's coming back. Um, Joanne Coley is coming online very, very soon. Oh, here she is. She's just going to get connected. She's actually in the car. Here you go. I'll just have to start that invite again. You just suddenly popped off. Hello. Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome back to Women's Biz Tribe Success Summit, everyone. We're obviously at the end of a very, very long summit, but it has been absolutely amazing. But our times have just gone out a little bit. So we so appreciate you just bearing with us. And we know that you're online because it just pops up. Don't you just love technology? I am so thrilled that you are still joining us. And you are going to love meeting our next speaker. Her name is Joanne Cole and she is a professional artist she's totally dedicated to her craft and I'm just so um, respectful of it and in awe of what she actually does she's known as the uh, South in the South Pacific as the artwork you definitely want to have in your home she's had outstanding achievements uh, over the last few years requests from former prime ministers to paint them face fa famous faces like Dr. Charlie Teo, uh, Kelly Slater, Anthony Mundine, the Premier of Western Australia, Mark McGowan. The list goes on and on. She's also on Foxtel as a host of The Couch. Uh, Barbara McNaught, Foxtel host. Hello, darling, and many, many others. I'm going to let her share because her bio goes on and on and on about all these things that she has done. And it's just so exciting to see where the world of an artist, a modern artist, who actually is actually do and who she serves so welcome to the summit joanne wow what an intro i, I wasn't the host but i was certainly guest and i loved it i loved being on it but that's okay yeah, that's okay I, I, one day i will be a host you sure will <laughs> sure will I must, have, I must have just spoke that into existence so. absolutely <laughs> but thank you so much for this opportunity, Annie, because I feel really humbled because I've been listening, as you know, and commenting on as many as I can. And it's just been just so inspiring to hear these words and to see, to see so many incredibly successful, empowered women. It's great, isn't it? Isn't it just been amazing? Oh, my goodness. I'm so buzzy and I'm the host. I just get to go up close and personal. And I know many people have been going in and out of different sessions and watching catch-ups. And like you, you've just gone and taught an art class and you're now on the way home. That's life, right? That's I just love it that we can just tap into this resource of all these amazing women from around the globe who are just there, happy to share. And so if you have missed one, if you might even be like Joanne, just, just wait till tomorrow, the next day, go back in now I want to hear about your journey though Joanne because you know I must admit when I met you I'm like going oh my gosh this lady just gets to how do you actually you can even paint pictures upside down and then spin them around they look amazing <laughs> your brain is obviously just wired in a different way let's just take the uh the delegates on a on a bit of a journey how did, did you always know that you're an artist how how easy or challenging has has your journey been well, you know, um, that's a loaded question. <laughs> There's a lot to say in that. Um, uh, my dad used to work for Channel 9 and he used to bring a paper home all the time and I just loved drawing. So I was just constantly drawing everything in the house, driving my mum insane. Um, I do remember one time watching the mums across the road picking up their kids from the kindy and I decided that I would sell my artwork from my mum's balcony while she watched days of her life. She had no idea. I was out the front. But the problem was I wasn't just selling my art. I was using her best ornaments to hold them down. But people came over thinking that I was selling the ornaments. And I should have actually done that. I would have made some serious money. So mum came out quite horrified. <laughs> but it's been a really interesting journey. But I wanted to start my talk, um, bringing up um, Beverly Price, who you uh, interviewed just the other day, and she said something that really resonated with me, because the day before, I'd actually had one of those days, and I don't even know what made me like it, but just one of those days where you just think, oh my God, and she defined the word fear as false evidence appearing real. Yes. And 
that was so powerful to me because that's what I was sitting there worrying about something that hadn't even happened. And what a waste of time that is when you really think about it. And so I thought, well, I really needed to hear that today. And, and then I kind of likened myself, just like you, Annie, I think sometimes we are like fires. We're like a fireplace and people come along and they sense our light like a moth to a flame. I won't say we burn them, but they come over and they warm their hands to us and then they walk away feeling really good. And then we kind of feel like our fire's been put out a little bit sometimes, a bit drained. But then sometimes you'll have those people, your tribe, when I, like when I met you, for example, and your fire is lit up and you want to do so much more. And I think it was a really interesting lesson to me. And so, Beverly, I, I decided to create my own analogy of the word fear. So oh. I created face yeah. everything and rise. Yeah? Oh. Face, face everything and rise. And I think my purpose is to lift, build, and encourage. Um, so when I – sorry, I've got easels behind me. I, I was teaching um, some people today and – Three women walked up to me at the end and they actually said to me, Jo, um, we came here thinking we came to an art class, but we actually walked away with so much more. And and this is my purpose. You know, I, again, I want to lift and build and encourage. And, and my story, you know, when I tell you my story, if my journey can help just one person out there that's listening to, to um, my story, then my journey has been worth it. Um, so yeah, no, I started off uh, for 20 years. I worked in corporate at Yellow Pages and Google, and I did that for many years, and I was good at it. And then all of a sudden, the rug was pulled out from me in my in my early 40s. Suddenly, I had the house on the beach and the whole thing, and suddenly I became rather abruptly, abruptly rather, a single mum. And although I was being paid well, I, I had a lot of costs and thing going outgoing but I really wanted to be able to afford to buy my kids nice things at Christmas and birthdays so I sat down I thought well how can I make that happen so I decided you know what I'm gonna well someone came to my house and saw my artwork on the walls and I hadn't actually painted anything for 10 years because I was actually told that I was no good at it and silly me believed it so that was my lesson silly me so for 10 years, I didn't paint anything. And she said to me, do you think you could teach my kids how to paint? And I was like, I don't know. I guess I could give it a go. So along they came. And what happened next was something I never would have expected. I played beautiful classical music, Debussy, um, Chopin, Italian opera. And I noticed that the kids that came to me, sometimes it wasn't even about whether or not they were good at art. They just wanted to come to my class because I made them feel good about themselves. I made them feel believed in and valued. And, and, and my classes just grew. And then the parents got really jealous and then they wanted to join in too. So before I knew it, I was teaching adults and kids. And, but I was doing it with a difference. I was doing it with music. And I was doing it as a motivational tool to make people believe in themselves because I want people to come to me that think that they can't. I, I, like today, for example, I had people come to me and they thought they could only draw a sick man. Uh, they would put their hands up. I said, who thinks they can only draw a sick man? By the end of it, do you think I could get rid of them? This is why I'm sitting in my car, folks, because I didn't want to leave my class, so I'm really behind. And... Uh, and I said to them, all right, well, I just proved to you that you can do something that you didn't think that you could do. So I want you to really have a good think now when you go home and think, well, what else do I think that I can't do? And what is it? Do I wake up? Ask yourself this question. Do I wake up every day loving what I do? Or do I hate what I do? And, you know, for 20 years, I woke up with anxiety of thinking, God, I've got to bring in a hundred grand a month, um, to keep my job. And I somehow did for 20, 25 years. But then one day I went, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to show my kids that I do what I love every day because I touch you very closely. So I decided I love teaching. 
so much that I would go to uni and get a degree. And so I went down that path. Halfway through my degree, I thought, um, you know what? I, you know, there's all these young people in uni and I need to stand out. So I need to be a famous artist. And a lot of people think you have to die to do that. And at the time, it, that was quite a common thing. So I thought I'm out to prove them wrong. So one day I actually went to an event and there was a woman there and she was painting and I I noticed that she'd raised $4,000. And because of my marketing background, I said, who organized this event? And they told me it was Pat Luker. So I walked over and I went, Pat, you and I are going to have coffee next week. And I sat him down and I said, you know what? I think I could raise a lot more than 4000 You need me to do a painting at your next event. I didn't tell him I hadn't actually painted anything for 10 years. At the time, I didn't think that was relevant. I thought he'd say no. So I didn't say that part. Anyway, one year later, he's a man of his word. He took his time, but he's a man of his word. And he rang me and he said, Joe, shaky jakey, can't make it. We're going to Rottnest. There's going to be Channel 9. We're going to be raising money for Telethon. There's going to be 500 people over the who's who. And we want you on stage painting something to do with rotness and I went absolutely when is it and he said it's in five days and I thought oh my goodness so I turned that panic into passion and I researched and found an artist called Iris Scott now Iris Scott's a New York artist who paints using her hands and I thought well how hard can that be finger painting right so there I am five days later up on stage painting using only my hands a giant mermaid and all of a sudden, the bidding got to 26000 And the auctioneer turned around and said, Joe, do you think you could do another one? And I said, sure, why not? So suddenly I raised 52000 So, of course, then I became very popular. <laughs> um, and I got asked to paint, I think a couple of weeks later, do you think you could paint Nat Phi? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I hadn't told him that I hadn't actually done a portrait before, but I didn't want to say no. So I enlisted the help of two very famous international artists. I think I've paid about two and a half thousand dollars of three days of intense training. By the 10th day, I actually painted something that looked just like him. Thank God. <laughs> um, long story short, uh, I think two weeks later, I got asked to um, go on stage at Optus Stadium to paint with Thirsty Merck, uh, Heath Ledger. And I said, when is it? And they said, this Saturday night. And I said, oh, I'm getting married the next day. And they said, oh, well, you can't do it. And I said, no, no, I can. So there I am on stage. And ironically, the man who made my engagement ring came running up to me and said, Joe, you've got paint all over that ring. Aren't you getting married tomorrow? So that was quite funny. Not long after, I'm at my honeymoon and I get another phone call. Joe, can you pay Nick Natanui? When are you back? And I said, tomorrow. And once again, I had one week. So it's really interesting. Um, so my story progressed. I have uh, last year painted Scott Morrison, Kelly Slater just this year, Dr. Charlie Tayo, and more recently, I've been asked to paint the Duchess of York. So I've raised a nearly... 200,000 uh, for charities across Australia. Last year, I collaborated with an international fashion designer and we created wearable art together. I created a gin with marine college gin actually inside of it. So you actually look better as you drink. That's what I tell everyone. Um, but so you just never know what you can do if you set your mind to it. So never ever, my message to you all out there is Never, ever tell anyone that you can't because you absolutely can. And I prove this to people every single day. So, you know, um, and this is my message to you all. You know, I, I want you to know that you have the power within. And I really hope that my story has empowered you all to have a really good think about what it is that you want to do. Annie, is that okay? Oh my goodness, that is so okay. I'm, oh, listen, everyone listening in, isn't Joanne just adorable? I just love the way you share. You're so fresh. You, you know, you're so enthusiastic, and it just goes so far. I love your your Richard Branson style. 
of of work as in say yes and work it out later right I, you know I just oh, yes. to, you know how he's like going if, if someone asks you something you go yeah I can do that and then go oh how do I do that um I've done that many times in my life and I tell you what it it is a great great way of um just going with opportunities and look at you you know we have choices don't we Joe? that you you could then go oh well I'm not I'm not able to do that or I haven't done it before how easy is it for us to you know just sort of try and save ourselves some potential humiliation or embarrassment or whatever but if someone's actually reached out and asked it and you're like going well I, it doesn't mean that I can't do it maybe I you know I believe I can backing yourself I think you've given it a fantastic example of what that actually looks like and look at you you've then gone and said yeah I didn't have the experience but then now I believed in myself and I and I can it's the difference of you know I, I can and I will and I'll actually then show them that, you know, that and there's even more. And and your journey is just phenomenal, right? So, and then that's it. You put yourself in a space that you suddenly make some money. Well, that other people are going to go, yes, I'd like more of that, please. And your journey, your career is just seriously starting. Where, where, where you're going to go is just um, amazing, amazing. So Thank for those... You. So for those listening in, oh, I've, got to, I've got to remember to keep the chat on so I can actually see it. Here we go. Yes, danger is real. Fear is just an illusion. Nice. Um, fear is well, such what's an interesting too, sorry, what's interesting too is a lot of people say to me, how do you get all these people to say yes to you? Well, most of the time people come to me. But, you know, uh, one thing that uh, I don't give up on is I keep asking the question because I'm, I might get lots of no's, but you know what? What if they say yes? And, uh, <laughs> and then I sort of thought, you know what? I love raising all this money for charities, but I really want to see the faces of the people that I'm helping. So I sort of changed my my way of thinking and I and I actually put it out there and approached some people and I said I want you to bring some kids to me who are really deserving um and I can't talk about it but if you look at my Facebook in the next 48 hours you'll actually see a Fox Tell show that's going to be um shot tomorrow and you will see something that I've done for a little girl to uplift her um, but I can tell you about the one from the couple of episodes ago where I actually helped a little boy who didn't have very long and I wanted to make him feel good about himself and I got him a full gaming system um, and I also got Nat 5 and Bryce Cotton to um, sign some paintings and I raised a lot of money for this little boy. But the gentleman who actually donated a um, gaming system approached me and said, Joel, I want to do it again. Who, who do you know we can help? So we went to the Ronald McDonald's house and we had got a tour and we donated one. But then I approached Magic Coat and Variety Club Australia and they gave me a little boy who, I can't probably go into his personal thing, but it was really tragic. And I gave him a gaming system. But when I saw him, I could see that there was a lot more that's going on. And I said to him, I'm going to give this to you, but I really don't want to see you going down the rabbit hole with this I don't want to be responsible for that because I think that's what happened so I actually put him in touch with someone who is like a Tony Robbins to kids and he's just been given a 200,000 grant to go from school to school to teach resilience and build up self-esteem so he is now mentoring this little boy and he is also um, giving him a free summer camp so he can be surrounded by kids just like him. So every kid doesn't feel like every kid is included, you know, and they're around their tribe. And I think that's what is really important. The one lesson I'm learning is one takeaway that I hope everyone gets from this is if you lift yourself up and you're around the right people, then you can do anything. And, yeah. you know, and it, and it really can change your life. And sometimes... When you try and make change, you have to be uncomfortable. You have to be uncomfortable and you have to expect big obstacles to come in your way. And a lot of people give up then and go, oh, it's all too hard. But the thing is, you've changed. You've told the universe what it is that you want. You have manifested it. So you have to expect things to come your way that are going to absolutely spin your wheels and perhaps remove people and replace them with people that are going to 
help you achieve what it is that you want to achieve. So you really have to trust and believe the process. You just yeah. have to go with it and, and just know that we are all here for a purpose and a reason. And sometimes you won't understand it and you won't understand those obstacles until much later. And then you'll actually thank God that it happened or you wouldn't have made that change. Exactly. And you become, you, it's like fitness. You become fitter. Do you know what I mean? You get it, it, Things get easier as you then try it. So that's right. The first time, the next time, whatever, you know, things are uncomfortable because you're not used to it. You're not, you're not tuned into that requirement. But once you actually just start, you know, extending yourself and putting yourself in different environments, mixing with different people, having other opportunities, like look at how you've grown now, you know, in speaking on stages, doing arts in front of lots of people, you know, you never know. You, the first time you do anything, it's going to be scary. But then as you as you start getting, you know, braver and more confident, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, then you suddenly get a whole different perspective. Anything's possible, you know. And like, isn't it exciting? Like you don't want to say, I, you know, on your when right at the end of your days, you don't want to go, oh, I wish I'd done that. You want to say, I can't believe I did that. You know, like I actually pushed my, my boundaries recently and decided to spend the night in a haunted place, uh, the WA's most haunted chapel, with a group of paranormal activity um, team. And that was fun. And it's really empowering and exciting because I can now look back at some of these crazy things that I've done and go, that was really fun. I put myself out of my comfort zone to scare the crap out of myself. <laughs> but, but you know what? It can't be sitting in front of my Facebook on a Saturday night. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's what we got to think. You know, where do we spend our time and is it wisely? Is it, is, are we achieving our goals by doing what it is that we do every day so we if sometimes if we just have to make a tiny change every day it doesn't have to be big huge things like uh, in a haunted chapel <laughs> but just a little just chip away and you will get there yeah what i love on your journey too is that you found this real love that's obviously just a part of your nature that you actually you really want to give and you want to help and so with your art that you've 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 been able to you know develop your craft if you like and, and make it your profession but around that you've seen what the extenders are and if you you know look from an entrepreneur's perspective you're always trying to go well what other things kind of complement and go with it but you, yeah. you know, it might, might be all in the business or for you you go yeah it's in the business but this side ability you know it's like your artwork has now given you the perfect way to really add value to all these charities these people in need that you would never have had if you didn't um, have the art as, as the hook, if you like. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes the art is exactly it. You want it hung in galleries and in homes. You want people enjoying that. But you also then go, because of that art, I get to have this other incredible benefit uh, that is, you know, helping children, you know, be able to, you know, enjoy their last days because of the gifts that you can give them and, to, and the experiences they can have. I think that's so cool. Well, collaborating as well has been exciting because I, I'm i on the track that you can never stop learning. So I collaborated not so long ago with an Indigenous artist and I said to her, look, I've created these glass resin pieces. Why don't the two of us sit down and do a story of healing? And so we created a story of healing over the top of the glass. Now, to my knowledge, I've never seen anything quite like this. Now, I raised $22,000 with those two pieces. Um, and that all went to Telethon and that was so exciting but it's actually ignited a spark inside of me because those pieces people really loved so mm. I last night I had a meeting um, with a, a very large uh, funeral company um, across Australia and I said to them what if we actually um, I created these pieces and um, I've got diamond dust within some of my glass pieces that I actually bought over from America. Now, Andy Warhol is the only other artist I know of that's used it. You can't buy it in Australia and it's a beautiful effect. And I said, what if we had the ashes, just a few ashes, so it shows the essence of the person that's passed. And I put that within my resin and my gold and my diamond dust. So instead of celebrating their death with an urn, we can celebrate their life in the beauty of art and hang this as something that they can keep within their family. And there was not a dry eye there. 
because I was just approached recently by someone who, oh, they lost a little baby. And she said, oh, look, I, Joe, I love your art. You know, do you think we could do something together, you know, as a memory of this little girl? So this is where this has sparked. And, and I really feel like, you know, I'm constantly pushing the boundaries of, of art and what is art and, and how can it make, empower people, but also give them a beautiful experience and a memory and make them feel good. And, and I think that, you know, I think we forget about the power of art. There's a very famous plastic surgeon in Hollywood, very well known. People come from her all over the world. She's a Persian woman, and they said, why you? Why why are you the best one? What is it that you're doing different? And you know what she said? I love what she said. She said, my mum made me do art classes when I was nine on a Wednesday afternoon, and she said, and I loved it because it taught me symmetry. It taught me balance. So when I look at someone's face, I look at balance. I look at symmetry. I look at what works. And uh, and I really think that that you know there are so many there's a lot of mathematics believe it or not in the way that I teach because I use a lot of grid systems so you know there's there's so much more and I think now more than ever art is very powerful um, because people need to think outside the box and that's what art allows. Mm, mm. What's your advice just to finish up this conversation to those listening in and go, you know. Is it risky following an artistic profession? Is it, you know, you, you get all those sensible conversations, go and get something that's got a guaranteed income, you know, your, you know, art or, or music of any kind, painting, pottery, poetry, writing, you know, they're all risky. But here you are an artist who's just, you know, it absolutely lives and breathes it. It's almost like I can't even imagine you not doing that. It'd be like chopping off your oxygen. And I know a lot I know. of people. I know, yes. <laughs> well, you know what? I've now discovered a massive passion of mine, which I didn't, I'd forgotten about, which is writing. So mm. I'm definitely going to be doing some children's books now. Like that is so on my radar. But look, you know, my advice to you guys yeah. is I listen to someone and I don't blame this person because it's my only, only silly fault for listening, right? But for 10 years, I didn't paint a thing. And mm. now I've raised, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars because I stopped listening so and I'm just I'm no one special trust me I'm just another person I'm just like everybody else but one day I decided I'd had enough of living and pleasing everybody else and I and you know what my girls they they take my they took my hand just the other day and said mom I'm so glad that you made this change and and I've since married the most incredible man and they said you know what we never knew what real love was until we saw the way he looks at you and the way that you look at him and he really helped me believe in myself and now I'm just so determined because I never knew this kind of feeling and you know and I think my god you know the difference someone in your life it doesn't have to be your husband it can be a best friend it can be a, a work colleague um but just believe in yourself don't listen to people when they say that you can't make money with whatever it is that your passion is because if you're determined and you throw everything at it don't expect it to happen overnight but look throw yourself into the learnings there's not a day that goes by that I'm not watching a YouTube video or I'm reading something I need to make sure my bucket list is I walk away from any conversation or any day at the end of the day that I haven't Listen to something that someone has said that I'm like what I said about Beverly Price. And there was also another woman named Joanne that was um, learn something every day. I think she said it as well. Um, and there was, oh, I'm just loving listening to this. But, you know, I'm really hoping that there's something in here. Um, I actually spoke at Women's International Day and I started off with, if I can help just one person on my journey, then, uh, that, one person listening, then my journey has been worth it. Now, that was two years ago. I'm still getting messages from women all over saying, I just want to tell you, you made a difference and this is what I did after you spoke. And how incredible is that? So this is, I'm hoping I'm going to get more messages just from this. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to get more messages. And uh, to be honest with you, look how comfortable we are. And uh, we only just met a couple of weeks ago. We went to an awards night. We sat next to each other, and then that's it. You go, oh my god, oh. like, tell me about your life. You just you, we Google stalk each other and go, oh my gosh. <laughs> now you're in a conference now we're like oh my gosh like think of where all the other opportunities are there's opportunities when you're when you're living in your lane you're you're just going in your own little zone and you're not worrying about what other people are thinking or feeling about it you just but become obsessed with it you know yes. go nuts. watch every youtube video on it make yourself known to everybody create some noise be where the party is and then you will attract you know, like you and I, we just like we just like flock to each other, and it's fantastic. Yes. Exactly what's happened, even over this summit. The amount of people I've messaged me going, "Oh my god!" Like I want you, what you guys have got. You know, how do you have women all around the world who've got that same vibrancy, that same view of supporting and collaborating with other women, and just like you know, making themselves available to people? Like it's fantastic. And so I, I totally reaffirm that message as we close now. So for those people listening in, if you haven't followed your passion yet, you know, just you know, really start believing yourself. Come and visit the tribe we we put on webinars every day to help you equip you you'll meet people who support you you know if you don't have a group who sort of do that you know it's instant you just automatically get immersed in it and it is contagious and you'll meet joanne you'll meet people like joanne you know who are just like going you know what life's too short just get into it imagine joanne not painting for 10 years it's crazy you know imagine if adele just went oh someone didn't like my song and then i didn't sing for decade you know like what the my um you know really just go, who cares if you love it i tell you what if you love it keep following it even if it's just a side hustle a passion a project you know something everyone has something in them and uh and that's right you just keep following that and then all of a sudden you know things will get will just take off and you'll meet people who will help you on your way you know even if you're not feeling as bold and uh, brave as joanne going i'm just going to say yes you know we'll help <laughs> link up with other people who will help you say yes right so you know absorb the support crew let you know you do whatever is required until one day you don't actually need that you just be you know big and brave all by yourself so thank you so much for coming to us straight from art class oh my goodness i feel honored here you are on the side of the road i'm glad you pulled over uh and <laughs> kept yourself safe and uh, we look to sharing with you again very very soon if you are wanting to just go oh my gosh i just actually want to talk to joanne straight away um her um email her website is on the bottom of the screen and it is i've got to put my specs on kj oh you you can tell us your website www.joannecolaley.com.au there you go. And um, and for those of you who are in Perth on the 26th of November, I'm going to be running an art class that's going to have an opera singer flying over from London. I'm having a live eagle. I'm having three owls that will be sitting on my shoulder and we'll be doing a selling sunset theme and we'll have women dressed as goddesses. Some of them will be painted all in gold. It'll be a book launch, an art gallery exhibition and we'll be teaching i'll be teaching down an alleyway under the stars how to paint our live under the stars while the opera singer sings so i never do anything small so yeah i love doing you know outside the box so if you're in Perth, um or if you want to be there and fly over for it it's going to be worth it let me know because there's only a vip 30 people at the actual art class but you can come to the gallery launch as well um, but I'll be putting out the information in the next couple of days, but they will go just like that. Yeah, absolutely. So as soon as Joanne's got that information, it's going to go out via our Facebook group, definitely. Um, you want to snap it up. I'm definitely thinking I'm going to see if I can rearrange my schedule to get over there. Uh, I just love it. It just sounds crazy and zany. And you know what? It's fun. And it's expressive and it's just all things that we support authenticity raising money um 
getting people together, pushing people out of their comfort zone, go, as if I can paint anything I've never painted in my life. Oh, my gosh, I've seen what people who haven't done anything in their life have done with Joanne. I'm like, oh, my gosh, um, in, absolutely incredible. All right, I'm going to move on to our next speaker because she is waiting. We're going to have a quick reboot and then um, I'm going to bring Swati uh, Tangy to you and uh, we are going to wish you uh, farewell, Joanne, and thank you so, so much for sharing with us today. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Bye. Ladies, are you dreaming big enough? I want you to dream big and act Bigger. You see, I want to have power. I want to be empowered. Suddenly being empowered is a more positive word because I want to make sure that I know my own values, my own values, my boundaries. I know what I want to achieve in life. Visible and invisible barriers are only a problem if you accept them as such. So a woman with a big dream also needs to have a plan because without a plan, that dream is just a wish. I love her confidence, I love her charisma and, and her positivity and her brightness and her colour and her lessons about life, you know. As a woman who's been through so much, uh, it was really, really inspiring and really interesting. I had four kids in two years. I wanted to be a businesswoman. I had no money. I had to think, how is this dream going to happen? If you actually start believing, if something's important to you, just back yourself. Back yourself despite what other people say. Successful people are not held back by what other people say. I would recommend that for everybody because everybody should have a dream and everybody should back themselves. So I think, I think she's awesome. Even when it feels like everything's not going to work, they go, you know what? I'm going to make sure that this does work. I'm going to be positive despite because it brings energy, it brings opportunity. And as soon as you actually get half glass empty, your vision will start failing. I encourage you to start making your dreams a reality in business and in life. Thank you.